Okay, so let us look at this simple question coming from forces. Let us look at this simple question coming from forces. So now, before we even go to calculate or to answer whatever questions are there on these particular questions, let me just explain something a little quick. So let me explain about the resultant force because it's something that you are going to come across in the question. So resultant force. Now, what is the resultant force? So the resultant force is just a sum of the forces acting on the body. Okay, so the sum of the uh, forces acting on the body is what we call the resultant force. Now, if the forces are acting in the opposite direction, the resultant force is found by subtracting uh, the forces. And if they are acting in the same direction, it is found by adding the forces. So I'm going to give two examples here. So we have this uh, body where you have two forces. So let me say this is one and this is two. This force, let me put it 15. Uh, 15 newton and let me put this one to be 2 newton let me put this force to be 10 newton okay 10 newton and let me put this one to be 25 newton now we have one diagram one and two so in order for you to find the resultant force on the first one here what you are going to do resultant force you are just simply going to add the forces okay since they are acting they are moving in the same direction so I'm just going to say the resultant force is equals to uh, 15 newton uh, plus 5, uh, that is 2 newton, 2 newton. This one should be able to give you uh, 17 newton, okay? That is the resultant force. What if you are given the forces that are acting in the opposite direction? What you do in terms of finding the resultant force? So in finding the resultant force for this, you are going to subtract uh, the forces. So I'm going to say 25 newton minus 10 newton. And the resultant force, therefore, is 15 uh, newton. Okay? The resultant force is equal to 15 newton. Just find the difference of the two forces. And I hope you've learned something here about the resultant force. I mean the resultant forces. Okay, so the other thing that I can explain here is the relationship that is there between uh, force and acceleration. What is the relationship that is there between force and acceleration? So this one is summarized in the second row of motion. That is uh, force is equals to mass times the acceleration. Okay. So mass times acceleration. So therefore mass, that is M is mass and A is what? Acceleration. Which means for you to find the force under this one. I know you've looked at how to find the force uh, in the previous one. That is how to find weight. But this time around, finding the force, you're going to use acceleration and mass. So mass should always be in kg. So that's something that you need to take note of. Mass should always be in what? Kilogram before you find acceleration. Then acceleration, you know that it's in meter per second uh, square. So multiplying these two, you find the force. Okay. This means that when you want to find acceleration now from this formula, you can still find acceleration by simply making acceleration the subject of formula. And therefore, you are going to divide mass and also the other side mass. And therefore, acceleration can also be calculated as force divide uh, mass. Given the force in Newton and mass in kg, we can still find acceleration. So you should take note of this. So acceleration, we shouldn't just stick to this formula acceleration, uh, change in velocity divide uh, time taken. So this is another formula that you can use to find um, acceleration given the mass and of course uh, the force okay so now having explained uh, that a bit of uh, this let us go now into the question so the question that is here it reads uh, the figure 2 shows some of the forces acting on the car of mass 800 uh, kilogram so this car that you are seeing has a mass of 800 kilogram okay Jim okay and this side you are able to see the driving force and also this one you are able to see the drag force. The drag force is also called the frictional force. So when you find the frictional force or drag force one and the same. Okay. So this is the force that is due to friction of the car. Okay. As it uh, move along uh, this, let us say this is the tarmac. Okay. So now what is the question? The first question that we are answering to uh, this uh, particular question that we are given. What is the uh, first uh, thing that we need to do. I mean, what, what is the first question that you are answering? So now, the first question is that find the drag force. 
find the drag force or find the magnitude or the size of the drag force when this car is moving at a constant speed. The first equation we are going to find the drag force when the car is moving at a constant speed. Okay, so again here, there's something that you should note. When the car is moving at a constant speed, or let me start with when the car is moving at a certain velocity, or let me say when there's change in velocity, okay, as the car is moving, therefore, uh, if there's a change in velocity, which means we have acceleration. Okay, since acceleration is a change in velocity or rate of change uh, of velocity. So when there's a change in velocity, acceleration has a certain, uh, there's a certain size of acceleration that is involved. But when the car is moving at a constant speed, acceleration is zero meter per second because there's no change in velocity. Okay, that is one of the points that you should take note before at some point, uh, or maybe in other questions you might be asked to calculate the acceleration after you've been told that the car was moving at a constant speed, or rather to state the acceleration uh, when you are told that the body or whatever object beat a car was moving at a constant speed. The key word is constant speed. Now, how do you do this one? So when the car is moving at a constant speed, we said acceleration is zero. That is a key point you should take note. And also... At this point, you should know that the driving force, so the driving force and the drag force, the drag force are equal. If it, moves, it is moving at a constant speed, the driving force and the drag force are equal. And therefore, if they ask you what is the size of the drag force, the size of the drag force is simply equal to the driving force. And therefore, the drag force here, the drag uh, force here is equals to also 2000 newton please take note only when the car is moving at a constant uh, speed or constant velocity that is what you should know then what is the other question that we can answer from this one so the other question that we can answer from this one so let me just maintain this one 800 kg the other question that you can answer is it when the when the driving force now was increased to 3,200 newton, this one we said is 2,000 newton, okay? So when the, 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 the force was increased, the driving force was increased to uh, 3,200 newton, find the resultant force. So you're finding the resultant what? Force. Now, remember what I said, when you have two forces acting in the opposite direction, what you do, you subtract or you find the difference of the forces. Okay, so you are going to have the driving force minus the frictional force. So what is the driving force? 3,200 Newton minus 2,000 Newton. This one you are going to have, you are going to have 1,200 Newton as the resultant force so that is how you simply find the resultant force sometimes you might be given the drag force and driving force like the way it is without you passing through the procedure or where we've, uh, uh, come uh, what we've passed through you are just given the diagram like this and they ask you find the resultant force so the resultant force we're just going to subtract the driving force subtract the drag force that is how you simply find it okay now, what is the next question that you expect from this one? The next question that you expect from this one is it, to find the initial acceleration. Okay, to find the acceleration. So now, take note that when unbalanced force acting on the body, they produce acceleration in direction of the net force. So one thing I forgot to mention also, the, I mean the, uh, the resultant force is also called the net force, resultant force. So if you find in a question where you're asked to find the resultant force, is that the same as the, the net force? So in the case where you're asked to find the net force or resultant force, these are just one same. So I was saying the resultant force, when the two forces that are unbalanced act on the body, they produce acceleration. This acceleration is in direction of the resultant force. Okay, so resultant force, this side we say zero force, but this side is 1,200 going this side. So now the car is going to move going this side. 
So this produces acceleration in direction of the force. So now here, if you are asked to find uh, the acceleration, the initial acceleration, you are going to use the formula force is equals to mass times the acceleration. So now you are finding acceleration, making acceleration the subject of formula, simply dividing M, dividing M. Acceleration is equals to force divide uh, mass. And therefore here you are going to have 2,000, 2,000, 2,000, uh, 1,200, I mean, divide 800. That is the mass of the car. And here we are going to find the answer to be, that is 1,000, 1,200 divide 800. So the acceleration, therefore, is equals to, let me just write it here. So 1.5 meter per second square, the unit for acceleration. So that is how you simply work this question out. So thank you very much for staying up to this point. If you are interested in the online tuitions, that is affordable online tuitions and of course exam oriented. If you are interested in the online lesson, you can call me on the number plus 2609764025663. Or you can still WhatsApp uh, the same number and we'll be able uh, to get in touch. Okay.